Bang! Not at all affiliated with Neve's Knives. Nice. This is the CJRB Caldera. I was going to come up with a funny, clever joke with the name of the Caldera, but it would have required me to use an Australian accent, and I can't do that. So this is a large, comfortable cleaver that came to me from Jared Neves. Um, this is the Caldera prototype in ARRPM9. So before we go any further, we started doing this. Let's do some size comparisons. The first obvious one to have would be its uh, its counterpart from Artisan, which is real similar in size. The Artisan Mastiff. And as you can see, these are kind of pretty much one for one on size. Um, this does have a rounder cutting edge. So this is, this is a curved knife, so it's gonna be hard. So there's the Artisan uh, Mastiff. So it's pretty similar in size to that one. The next one you might notice as one that we see real often on the channel, the Chris Reeves Sabenza. So another really close, and I've actually checked this once before. These things are just about one for one as well. So if you know the size of Sabenza, you know this, the length of that one. And the final one for reference that a lot of people are gonna know. And the final one here is the Rat One, another relatively large knife. It's a good knife. It's just not as far up my gem scale as it is for Nick Shabazz. Um, actually, I think he loves the Rat too. This one is just a little bit longer in overall length, and I think it has a lot to do with the weirdness of the blade shape. So, um, like I said, this is a great knife. It's just not as far up my gem scale uh, as it is for Nick Shabazz. So let's go ahead and get this out of the way, and let's take a good look at this knife. So. Um, this is a really fun knife. This is another one of the large cleaver style knives, really broad, uh, great, great action on this. CJRB and Artisan have really good action on our knives. This one's just shy of drop shut. You got the reverse flick option, front fli or back flipper, just a standard flipper. Um, really nicely shaped handles that just kind of feel like you drop right in. It doesn't feel too tight. It's not too tall in the back that I feel like I'm pushed up in. Uh, there's some knives, as much as I love it, the, the Koenig Arius, it kind of feels like I'm jammed down in because it's, it, it's too scooped out here and then too thick back here. Great, great knife. It's just not a knife I can carry. The look of this is brilliant with the black G10 and red pivot collar. And then you've got this nice modified sheep's foot cleaver style, Warren Cliff modified kind of blade. It's a cleaver. And like I said, you've got that aperture in it and the action on the reverse flick is really good. So this is done in ARRPM9 steel, G10, and it's a liner lock. Now, I will say there may be some inconsistencies on this knife that you might not see in production models, and I'll tell you why. All of the protos that they build at this plant where Artisan and CRG, CJRP are made, even though they're two different companies, they share a production line, they are all done by hand. So uh, the prototypes are done by hand, and you're going to see some minor inconsistencies. I saw them on my production prototypes of my knife. Um, but yeah, you've got a really large, really large broad blade that cuts really well because it comes down so thin behind the edge because it is broad. I did a short about that the other day, about the width of the blade allowing that more consistent transition down. And then the handle, while it is thin here, is nice and broad here. So I did a short about that today um, where, you, well, I filmed it today. You guys saw it a few days ago. Um, where if you're going to have a narrow blade, a narrow handle here, you got to have some width here. So this is so far one of the best cutters out of that batch that Jared sent me. Um, the only one I can think that's better is the CMB Made Knives, which I can't remember if you guys have already seen at this point the, the full review. I know I already filmed it, but I don't remember if it's edited or not. So... Those two cut about the best of any of those knives that Jared sent me in this batch. Um, like I said, done in ARRPM9 steel. That's one of my favorite steels. It is very easy to maintain. You can strop ARRPM9 up from next to nothing really easily. Um, it's just the feel on this because when you have this, this is nice and curved here, but then this is fairly straightforward from the pivot. There's no real, I mean, it has a little bit of an upsweep, but when you get on it, that blade right there, holy cow, that's comfortable for doing a lot of duty tasks. Um, 
This would be, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say that it would be the perfect knife for it, but if you were in a pinch and you were out in the woods, this would work as a skinning knife. It has that same feel and profile that you would want from a knife that you're skinning out an animal. Um, liner locks are starting to become some of my favorite knives these days because they're getting done so much better than I remember. Uh, this one's just a little bit past 50%, but then again, it's a prototype. They're hand built. There could be some inconsistencies. I, that's the, that's the farthest over I've seen a CGRB liner lock. Um, but liner locks are great because you don't lose anything in comfort here, but you still have access to that lock bar and it still has, I mean, liner locks today are as robust as a frame lock and they're more comfortable in hand. So I'm digging that. Hang on just a second, guys. I gotta take a break. It is so hot out here. Guys, I hate to interrupt the video because I know we're having fun, but I do have to do the YouTuber thing and remind you that this channel is self-sponsored with all the affiliate links and stuff you see down below. Anything from knives, tools, EDC gear, and uh, Blade HQ, anything, all the Amazon links, they all support the channel. It doesn't cost you anything at checkout. So. I'll talk about that at the end of the video. Now let's go back to the knives. Yeah, guys, I, I literally had to stand in front of the fan for a minute because it is hot and it's not so much that it's hot, it's super humid here today. And now you can hear my idiot neighbor who decides that he has got to sit out in front of his house and play his stereo. So at any rate, like I was saying, super comfortable in hand because you don't have any problems with where the liner drops in. No hot spots on this at all. It's done attractively with a really good looking backspacer. I like when a backspacer does stand up occasionally if it's done nice and cleanly. Like I said, no hot spots on it. This thing cuts really, really well. I've done a good bit of cardboard cutting with this already today. And it's not something that I think is going to give you any problems for any day-to-day -day carry. The only issue I would say would be size because you're looking at on the mat, about eight and a quarter inches. So it's about eight and a quarter inches overall length. So it's a, not a small knife. And the big thing is it's not the length, it's the girth, right? Isn't that what's important, ladies? I'm just kidding. Um, so <laughs> the, uh, the width of this, this is a pocket hog. That's one of the things I will say, it's a pocket hog, but it does sit nice and deep in the pocket. So you don't have a lot sticking out. It is difficult to carry this and have room for a lot of other stuff, unless you've got something fairly slender uh, that you can carry up forward. You can carry this up forward, but like you're not gonna be able to, if you've got this and then another knife in your right front pocket, you're not putting anything else in your pocket is what I'm getting at. Um, it's, it, it's, it's pretty broad, it sticks out pretty far. So overall, I mean, I'm digging this. They do have the reversible pocket clip option on this. You can see right there, that screw, will be replaced by that screw. You can definitely um, flip that pocket clip. You do have a lanyard hole. I'm not such a fan of it, but it's not in a spot where it really catches on anything. It doesn't detract from the, from the knife. Um, another reason, I was gonna say, another reason I like liner locks, and Alex Steingraber and I talked about this in a group chat here not long ago. Um, it's usually not a problem where you're getting your knife out of your pocket. This knife, when you put it in your pocket, catches. The knife that I did a video about earlier today that bayed uh, this one right here. Um, sometimes if they're really steep and sharp, that will catch going into the pocket. I don't usually have too many problems getting a knife out of the pocket unless the pocket clip's really close, but going into the pocket, it has a tendency that the, the lip of your pocket will hop will catch on that and then it's it's almost like i said a rumble strip so not a fan of those lock bar cutouts being on the outside but with a liner lock you don't have to worry about it because there isn't one at all man just a gorgeous attractive knife i'm enjoying carrying it it's been fun to carry it so far today so there you go guys let's uh turn this around do some final thoughts and then send you home guys i'm rather damp how hot it is out here in the studio. I've sweat this shirt through. I was going to change shirts, but I was like, why get another one sweaty? I've got to film this outro. So guys, that's it on this one. If you like the videos, give them a thumbs up. If you don't like them, give them a thumbs down, but please try to tell me why I can't change the content. If you don't, tell me what you don't like. If you want to support the channel, it's as simple as like, share, subscribe, drop a comment, hit the bell icon. If you do hit the bell icon, make sure that you've got notifications turned on your device or you will not get notified 
of the pretty much three things that go up a day. It's not so much that it's so hot, it's just really humid today. Um, if you want to support the channel financially, however, there's a handful of ways. I believe I did an intermission talking about it, but there's a bunch of affiliate links down below that will get you anything from gear, knives, things like that. They all support the channel, don't cost you anything extra at checkout. I have a membership that's tier-based. I've got all kinds of different tiers, with all kinds of different benefits. Pick the one that suits you best. But remember, everybody saves $5 off my sharpening service. Everyone has access to my Gilded server. Premium tier members have access to a sharpening tutorial series. And baseline and premium tier members have access to a giveaway that I do on the Gilded server. And the final way is I have a merchandise store on Ember Shirt Co. Anything you purchase on Ember Shirt Co., I can save you 10% at checkout with the coupon code Crazy Sharp, capital C, capital S, Crazy Sharp, saves you 10% at checkout. And if you send me pictures of you wearing my merchandise, I will put them in a video. Guys, I love you all. Keep it clean in the comments section. If it's your birthday, happy birthday. And I will see you in the next video.